This sound file contains the spoken version of a Wikipedia article, E3, recorded by user Remagoxa. The material recorded is current as of the 12th of April 2021. E3 from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at em.wikipedia.org. E3, short for Electronic Entertainment Expo, is a trade event for the video game industry. The Entertainment Software Association, ESA, organises and presents E3, which many developers, publishers, hardware and accessory manufacturers use to introduce and advertise upcoming games and game-related merchandise to retailers and to members of the press. E3 includes an exhibition for, for developers, publishers and manufacturers to showcase titles and products for sale in the upcoming year. Before and during the event, publishers and hardware manufacturers usually hold press conferences to announce new games and products. Over time, E3 has been considered the largest gaming expo of the year by importance and impact. Before 2017, E3 was an industry-only event. The ESA required individuals wishing to attend to verify a professional connection to the video game industry. With the rise of streaming media, several of the press conferences were broadcast to the public to increase their visibility. E3 2017 became open to the public for the first time, with 15,000 general admittance passes for those who wanted to attend. E3 takes place annually in June at its location, the Los Angeles Convention Center in the United States. As of 2020, it has only missed one year, with E3 2020 being fully cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. E3 2021 is currently being planned as a virtual online-only event. Contents this article contains six sections with five subsections. Section 1. History. Section 1.1. Origins. Section 1.2. Growth and success through first decade, 1995 to 2006. Section 1.3. Media and Business Summit Biennium, 2007 to 2008. Section 1.4. Return to larger format, 2009 to 2015. Section 1.5. Opening to the public, 2016 to present. Section 2. Data link. Section 3. Event history. Section 4. See also. Section 5. References. And Section 6. External links. Section 1. History. Section 1.1. Origins. Before E3, game publishers went to other trade shows, like the Consumer Electronics Show, and the European Computer Trade Show to display new or upcoming products as well as to pre-sell shipments to retailers for the rest of the year including the late year holiday season as well as to view for press coverage of upcoming games. As the game industry grew rapidly during the early 1990s, industry professionals felt that it had outgrown the other trade shows. According to Tom Kalinske, CEO of Sega America, begin quote, the CES organisers used to put the video game industry way, way in the back. In 1991, they put us in a tent, and you had to walk past all the porn vendors to find us. That particular year, it was pouring rain, and the rain leaked right over our new Genesis system. I was just furious with the way CES treated the video game industry, and I felt we were a more important industry than they were giving us credit for. End quote. Sega did not return to CES the following year and several other companies exited from further CES shows. Separately, in 1994, the video game industry had formed the Interactive Digital Software Association, IDSA, later becoming the Entertainment Software Association, ESA, in 2003, in response to the attention the industry had drawn from the United States Congress over a lack of a rating system in late 1993. The IDSA was formed to unify the video game industry and establish a commission the Entertainment Software Ratings Board, ESRB, to create a voluntary standard rating system that was approved by Congress. The industry recognised that it needed some sort of trade show for retailers. According to Elliot Minsker, Chairman and CEO of Knowledge Industry Publications, which produced and promoted the show with Infotainment World, quote, retailers have pointed to the need for an interpretive event that will help them make smarter buying decisions by interacting with a wide range of publishers, vendors, industry influentials, and opinion leaders in a focused show setting. Unquote. 
Attempts were made between the video game companies and the Consumer Electronics Association, CEA, which ran CES, to improve how video games were treated at CES, but these negotiations failed to produce a result. Pat Ferrell, creator of GamePro, which was owned by International Data Group, IDG, conceived of an idea for starting a dedicated trade show for video games, building off IDG's established experience in running the Macworld convention. Ferrell contacted the IDSA, who saw the appeal of using their position in the industry to create a video game specific trade show and offered to co-found the Electronic Entertainment Expo with IDG. Though several companies agreed to present at this E3 event, Ferrell discovered that CEA had offered video game companies a dedicated space at the Nick CES, which would have conflicted with the planned E3 event, requiring the companies to pick one or the other. Most of the IDSA members supported E3, while Nintendo and Microsoft were still supportive of the CES approach. After about three to four months, Ferrell was told by CEA CEO Gary J. Shapiro that he had, quote, won, and that they had cancelled the CES video game event, effectively making E3 the premier trade show for the video game industry. This section is accompanied by an image. The image caption reads, quote, E3's longest used logo, 1998 to 2017. Unquote. Section 1.2 Growth and Success Through First Decade, 1995 to 2006. The first event was held from May 11th to 13th, 1995, at the Los Angeles Convention Center, which would generally be the convention's location in future years. The organizers were unsure of how successful this would be, but by the end of the convention, they had booked most of the space at the convention center and saw more than 400 attendees. In the aftermath of its first year, E3 was already regarded as the biggest event in the video game industry. The IDSA realised the strength of a debut trade show, and subsequently renegotiated with IDG to allow the IDSA to take full ownership of the show and the intellectual property associated with the name, or hiring IDG to help with execution of the event. The show was held in May until 2016. In 1996, IDG and the IDSA tried a Japanese version of E3 in preparation for a worldwide series of events at the Makuhari Messe in Tokyo as E3 Tokyo 96 in association with TV Asahi. Although Sony Computer Entertainment was the show's original sponsor, the company withdrew its support in favour of, of its PlayStation Expo. Sega pulled out at the last minute, leaving Nintendo the only big free company to appear. Held November the 1st to the 4th, 1996, the presence of several other gaming expos and lack of support from Japanese game manufacturers led to reportedly poor turnout and rumoured E3 events in Singapore and Canada did not take place. Due to failed negotiations for the convention space in Los Angeles, the E3 conventions in 1997 and 1998 were held at the Georgia World Congress Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Turnout at these shows was dramatically lower than at the first two E3s, which has been attributed to a declining number of game developers and the fact that many video game companies were based on the West Coast, making the cost of sending staff and equipment to Atlanta prohibitive. The show returned to the Los Angeles Convention Center in 1999 and continued to grow in attendance, ranging from 60,000 to 70,000 attendees. In addition to the event, E3 started to support, or became associated with, several websites. One was E365, introduced in 2006, an online community which attendees used to network and schedule meetings. This section is accompanied by an image. The image caption reads, quote, Los Angeles Convention Center during E3 2005, with an Atari banner hanging over the South Hall lobby, unquote. Section 1.3, Media and Business Summit Biennium, 2007 to 2008. Following the 2006 convention, the IDSA, now ESA, found that many exhibitors were worried about the high costs of presenting at the event, spending between five to ten million dollars for their booths. They had also found that a larger proportion of attendees were bloggers and attendees who were not perceived to be industry professionals by vendors, managing to secure access to the conference. These additional attendees diluted the vendor's ability to reach out to their target audience, retailers and journalists. Both of these reasons had previously caused the Comdex trade show to shut down. Several large vendors told the ESA that they were going to pull out of the next E3, which would have had a domino effect on other vendors. To avoid this, the ESA announced in July 2006 that E3 would be downsized and restructured, 
due to the overwhelming demand from the exhibitors and would limit attendees to those from the media and retail sectors. For 2007 and 2008, E3 was renamed to the E3 Media and Business Summit and moved into the July timeframe, about two months later in the year than previous shows. The 2007 show was held at the Barker Hangar at the Santa Monica Airport and other nearby hotels in Santa Monica, California, with attendance limited to about 10,000. The 2008 event returned to the Los Angeles Convention Center but also kept attendance for about 5,000. ESA was harshly criticised for these smaller events. Industry analyst Michael Patchter said that because consumers had been eliminated from attending the events, there was little external media coverage of these E3s, reducing the visibility and commercialization opportunities for publishers, and suggested that without a change, E3 would become extinct. Patchter also found that retailers were less interested in E3 due to the later calendar date. Activision, which had been a member of the ESA since its start, opted to leave the ESA in 2008 and to no longer participate in the E3 event, with their CEO, Robert Kotick, stating that the company was too big for the E3 and ESA at that point, riding on revenue from World of Warcraft. Section 1.4 returned to larger format 2009 to 2015. Responding to the complaints from the previous two years, the ESA announced that E3 2009 would be more open but capping attendance at about 45,000 and closed to the public as to achieve a balance between the two extremes. All subsequent E3s have taken place in June of the calendar year at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Starting in 2013, some of the major video game companies, particularly Nintendo and the Electronic Arts, have opted not to showcase at E3. In Nintendo's case, they have foregone a large keynote presentation and instead have used pre-recorded Nintendo Direct and live video events during the E3 week since 2013 to showcase their new products, though they still run floor booths for hands-on demonstrations. Electronic Arts, since 2016, have set up a separate EA Play event in a nearby locale to announce and exhibit their titles, citing the move as a result of the lack of public access to the main E3 show. Other vendors, like Microsoft and Sony, have used pre-E3 events to showcase hardware reveals, leaving the E3 event to cover new games for these systems. By 2015, traditional video game marketing had been augmented by the use of publicity through word of mouth by average gamers, persons not normally part of the professional development community. The ESA began to seek ways to allow these people to attend E3 in limited numbers without overwhelming the normal attendees. For EV 2015, 5,000 tickets were distributed to vendors to be given to fans to be able to attend the event. That same year also marked the introduction of the PC Gaming Show, featuring games for personal computers across a range of developers and publishers. This section is accompanied by an image. The image caption reads, quote, E3 2015 with Uncharted 4, A Thief's End Banner, unquote. Section 1.5, Opening to the Public. 2016 to present. E3 2016 featured a separate but free E3 live event at the nearby LA Live Space that was to help provide a small scale version of the E3 experience. While it drew about 20,000 people, it was found to be underwhelming. In 2017, E3 reserved 15,000 tickets to the convention for members of the public to buy. These were all sold leading to more than 68,000 attendees during E3 2017, which led to noticeable crowding and floor management issues. ESA confirmed that E3 2018 would include public passes, but that for two of the days, the event would be, would be open only to industry attendees for three hours prior to admitting the public. The ESA unveiled the new logo for E3, replacing its previous one using three-dimensional block letters with a flatter, stylized graphic in October 2017. While the ESA has the convention centre space reserved through 2019, ESA CEO Mike Gallagher said, following the 2017 event, that they were considering other options due to lack of modernisation and upgrades that the centre has had to make the space more appropriate for their needs. Gallagher said that the ESA was working with the city and Anschutz Entertainment Group, AEG, which owns the Los Angeles Convention Centre and the space around it, with plans to have nearly 500,000 square feet, 46,000 square metres of additional exhibition space added by 2020, but that they would judge this in the 2018 show. During E3 2018, the event drew 69,200 attendees, 
the largest since 2005. Sony Interactive Entertainment had announced that it would not be participating in E3 2019, having had it participated in every E3 since its launch. Sony stated that they, quote, are exploring new and familiar ways to engage our community in 2019, unquote. Sony CEO Sean Layden stated in a February 2019 interview that with changes in retailer procurement, their own switch to fewer but more quality titles, and the rapid spread of news via the internet that having a trade show as late as June is no longer helpful, and that Sony had to create its own destination PlayStation experience in February as to secure retailer sales. Industry analyst Michael Patcher, speaking to Gaming Bolt, said, quote, I think it's a mistake to skip the show. They will probably be there without a big booth. It was a surprise to me, unquote. During the last day of the event in 2019, it was confirmed that E3 would be held at the LACC for at least another year with the 2020 edition. The ESA affirmed they had renegotiated use of the LACC through 2023, but retained the rights to break that contract if desired. ESA's membership approved an increase in the number of public passes from 15,000 to 25,000 for the 2020 show. Alongside this, the ESA had presented proposed but not finalised plans to make the 2020 event a, quote, fan, media and influencer festival, unquote, bringing more events for attendees while they are waiting in lines, a concept called curatainment that is used at Disney theme parks, as well as priority key influencers to provide them appointment-only presentations on new games. Additionally, with these changes, the ESA were considering adding an extra day on the Tuesday of the convention week that would be an industry-only day before the floor of the convention was open to public passes. Sony affirmed it would not attend the 2020 show, stating that the vision for E3 2020 didn't meet their goals, and instead would showcase their games at other events throughout the year. In the wake of Sony's announcement, ESA affirmed that the 2020 show, quote, will be an exciting, high-energy show featuring new experiences, partners, exhibitor spaces, activations and programming that will event entertain new and veteran attendees alike, unquote, and that the proposed updated format had been drawing significant exhibitor interest. On February 12, 2020, Jeff Keighley, host of E3 Coliseum and the Game Awards, released a statement announcing that he would also be foregoing his attendance of E3 for the first time in the Expo's 25-year history citing his discomfort with the direction planned for the event in 2020. However, in the months leading to the 2020 event, the coronavirus outbreak created concerns related to large gatherings such as E3. As late as March 4th, 2020, the ESA had still intended to hold E3, though said they were monitoring the situation around the outbreak. On March 11th, 2020, the ESA announced that it was cancelling the E3 2020 event, citing, quote, increased and overwhelming concerns around the COVID-19 virus, unquote. The ESA also claimed that they will both fully refund prospective attendees and exhibitors and advise an online alternative that would enable exhibitors to hold virtual presentations during the same week in lieu of a physical meeting. However, by April 7th, 2020, the ESA stated that the disruption caused by the pandemic made it impossible to host an online equivalent, fully cancelling the event, though the ESA would help its partners to present individual announcements via eFreeze website. Despite cancelling the 2020 event, the ESA announced it planned to hold the E3 2021 event, announcing its normal June dates to partners in April 2020. While the ESA had planned for a combined in-person and virtual event, the organisation notified its partners in February 2021 that it was dropping the in-person event but maintaining the virtual event plan. According to Video Games Chronicle, the ESA still plans to use the LA Convention Centre to broadcast some of these virtual events during E3 2021, as well as planning on further use of the space in 2022 and 2023. Section 2. Data Leak. On August 3rd, 2019, it was found that an unsecured list of personal attendee data was publicly accessible from the ESA's site. The list contained the information of over 2,000 people, most of them being the press and social media influencers that had attended E3 2019. ESA removed the list after it was found, and apologised for allowing the information to become public. However, using similar techniques to access the 2019 data, users found similar data for over 6,000 attendees of past E3 events, still available on user-authenticated portions of their website. These two were subsequently pulled by the ESA once notified. 
A number of journalists on the lists reported that they were subsequently harassed and had received death threats due to their private information being released as part of the leak. Ahead of E3 2020, the ESA stated that they were taking strict security measures to protect the privacy of those registering for E3 as a result of the leak. Ahead of E3 2020, the ESA stated they were taking stricter security measures to protect the privacy of those registering for E3 as a result of the leak. ESA President Stanley Pierre Lewis stated they plan to collect less data from attendees and take measures such as securing the data on separate servers to avoid this type of leak from occurring again. Section 3. Event History This section consists of a table containing a list of E3's events, with their dates, locations, attendance and presenting companies. For the full table, take a look at the written version of this article. Section 4. See also. This section suggests some Wikipedia articles for further reading. The suggested articles are 1. Brazil Game Show 2. Consumer Electronics Show 3. Game Developers Conference 4. Gamercom 5. Gamescom 6. List of Gaming Conventions and 7. Tokyo Game Show Section 5. References There are references available in the written form of this article. Please be sure to verify the information found in Wikipedia using the references provided or by cross-referencing the information yourself. Section 6. External links. In addition to the above, several external links have been listed for finding additional information online. There's also a link to Wikimedia Commons, which has media relating to the Electronic Entertainment Expo. We have now come to the end of the spoken article E3. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 Unported License, available at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by hyphen sa slash 3.0.